Welcome back to Comics Experiment. My name is Benny, that is Dan, and that is Andy. And this is the show that we get together on a regular basis to talk about weird things going on in the world of comic books and looking up stuff that we didn't even know existed half of the time. Today's episode is brought to you by our sponsor, Honey. Yes, where you can go to joinhoney.com slash experiment to get PayPal Honey for free. We'll tell you more in the middle of today's episode. Yes, and it's also brought to you by another one of our other projects that is relaunching for the 800th time, Manga Storian. If you don't want what you expect from Manga Storian, which is complete stories and full stories, but you want me talking about manga, go check it out. It, yeah, I'm just using the name, guys. <laughs> I'm just using the name. And today, in order to work with these mics, I'm going to try to keep myself at a lower level speaking-wise. If I get loud, I have given them permission to slap me in the back of the head. So today, I thought it would be interesting to talk a little bit about the Joker situation and how it plays into the new woke marketing that marketing companies are doing. And then look at things that we're probably, we're basically we're going to look at 30 different Silver Age things and other pregnancies that happened in comic books and decide if they are weirder or not so weird. That's what we're going to do today. It's another game, guys. <laughs> weird or not. Yay. I love games. <laughs> Just like Dungeons and Dragons on our Dungeons and Ale channel. <laughs> All right. <laughs> nice plug. Thanks. All right. So here's what's actually been going on right now that everyone is freaking out about. Um, Joker has gotten pregnant in the backup of a Joker storyline. Now, I did a whole video on explaining how that links into everything, but what it boils down to is it's a not in continuity, not, uh, it's not even, it's not in canon, it's not in continuity, it's just a one off storyline. The plot basically is it's in a series of Silver Age stories. Silver Age is when all the weird stuff happened in comic books. Mm -hmm. And in those Silver Age stories, things like Superman shooting other Supermen out of his fists or turning into a giant ant didn't really happen. Just in the backup of the Wait, oh, hold on, hold on. He turned into a giant ant? Yeah, it's in one of our things today, so you'll be hearing more about that soon. Don't worry. <laughs> I got you covered. All right. I wanted to mention things that are already going to get brought yeah, up. Yeah, that one I've <laughs> never heard before. He called himself Ant-Man. <laughs> <laughs> and then Stan Lee was like... So anyway, um, the long story short, you can, I'll link the video down below that will give you the full explanation as to what how it all got to that. There's four issues of this Joker, the man who stopped lapping. It's a great mystery story, but in the back of it, they're creating these Silver Age one-off bizarre stories involving the Joker. Things like the Joker gets his legs cut off and has gorilla legs sewn on. Or he fakes his own death to see if anybody cares about him and then is excited and dies because of that. And, sure. of course, he gets pregnant. What actually happens in the Silver Age story is he's looking for love. He goes to Zatanna. Zatanna says that he will get, no one else will get pregnant by him which makes him then get pregnant with his own mud baby, which he then pukes up and it turns into a mini Joker. <laughs> yeah. That's every Wednesday, right? Mm. Mud and comics? Most of the time, yeah, honestly. <laughs> so that's the storyline going on in that one. Now, what I was mentioning with the woke marketing is, because everyone's freaking out, it's funny because I made the video, and a lot of the comments are crazy right uh, argument or crazy left argument, but there are some peppered in there that just like, I don't care. Like, I just, this is just a stupid Joker story, which is my stance on Which the is what it was. Yeah. It's just a stupid Joker story. That's all it is. Right. I don't even think the story itself is that interesting. It got a mild chuckle out of me. Like, <laughs> Joker's doing the Junior movie. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot about that movie. <laughs> Most people did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. During Schwarzenegger's comedy face. <laughs> You know, the expert comedian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know Schwarzenegger. What woke marketing is, and I only know, I haven't done super deep diving into it, but I know of it because we recently did a few podcasts over at Absolutely Marvel in DC, the channel where we do all podcasts. Um, we discuss the lack of marketing on DC and Marvel's part. Woke marketing is a more recent creation by the marketing departments of everyone. Basically, back in the 90s, it was all about sex sells. You had bikini girls eating Whoppers, and you had like yeah. sexy food and sexy products and things like that. <laughs> that sexy that burger, is so <laughs> sexy. You should see some of the commercials that were pulled up in some of the stuff. Oh no, I know. Yeah. I was alive yeah. in the '90s. Look at, look at <laughs> I remember. Water. Look at it dripping. It's yeah. barbecue sauce yeah. all over the table. I just can we go back to the fact that apparently you're aroused by burgers. <laughs> you're not. No. What about a good steak? I mean, I enjoy it. Yes. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm aroused by it. Now I'm curious. What is that fetish called? Let me know in the comments down below. Anyway, I'm inviting some weird conversation. Yeah. That's yeah. a weird one. Let's yeah. ask Huey. He probably, he probably, <laughs> he probably has it. Yeah. Yeah. 
Um, and then around uh, like mid two thousands to about to about two thousand fifteen two thousand sixteen, um, basically the it was the outrageous marketing, where okay. everything had to be crazy like outrageous. the hamsters. It was like the hamsters with that car. Remember they would have the like. The oh yeah, the that, Kia Souls are run by hamsters. Oh yeah, yeah plus the berries and cream guy. <laughs> Don't remember that one. It was like the it was for I want to say Starburst or something, and it was just this guy in like a later hose, and he's like berries and cream, berries and I cream. I don't remember no? this at uh, all. There are some people out there that are like, yes. The uh, what I think is probably the best example. Ben still of finds that. that arousing. That's the weird part. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, this is the part I find arousing. The okay. weird Skittles commercials they used to do. Oh yeah, I do remember the Skittles commercials. Yeah, that, yeah. that was outrageous the advertising. Taste the rainbows. It. Right. Yeah. It was to make you talk about it. That was the whole point. Remember the horrific futures of those Skittles characters though, like the guy that couldn't even touch his like grand touch oh they would burst in everything would burst into skittles yeah, yeah. He would, like turn into skittles when he touched it was it. like the midas like, touch yeah, yeah like king skittles. midas yeah, yeah exactly he was like like the guy was like it's incredible it's just so good he goes is it incredible when you can't hold your own grand yeah it was like really weird yeah <laughs> like, where are we going and it made me want to get skittles to be honest with you <laughs> that was the i could get rid of so market. many annoying people <laughs> and get skittles at the same time well we got into oh Damn it. <laughs> well now you're the host how does that make you feel Podcast over. <laughs> Skittles. We then moved into the 2015, 2016, 2017 era, which mostly kicked off with Keurig, actually. Um, they were supporting Kaepernick, and they made a public stance about that. So when marketing agencies discovered is everyone freaked out. The sales of Keurig actually went up because they were taking a stance against something. Okay. At the same time, people were boycotting Keurig. Because they were taking a stance against things, people were killing, like blowing up Keurigs and stuff like that. They were doing all kinds of crazy stuff. Sounds like fun, right? What the marketing departments discovered is this made everyone know what Keurig is. Mm -hmm. If you didn't know what a Keurig was, you would go buy a Keurig because you want coffee. But they also realized that while sales took a hit initially, new customers came in, which then bolstered the sales, and on top of that. It was tested that three months after the supposed boycott, seventy percent of the people that were boycotting just bought another Keurig. <laughs> they just, I, for, I forgot I was boycotting it. <laughs> Damn it! And then they discovered that another twenty percent of the boycotters came back over the course of the next nine months. I got bored with the boycott. <laughs> I mean, pretty much. Yeah. So honestly, at the end yeah. of it, very few people were actually boycotting, boycotting Keurig, and everyone knew what a Keurig was, and it was stocks went up, its sales went up, and it didn't matter. Because what's that old saying? Like, no news is no bad news, or like, it's always good news. It always works. Marketing works. <laughs> I know what you're saying. But now that you've said that, I can't think of the you can't actual think of words. The phrasing but, on it. But yes, it's like, uh, like any publicity is good publicity. Mm. Right. So other companies then proceeded to, to follow up and test these theories. Uh, one of the more famous ones was the Pepsi situation where supposedly a Pepsi was going to stop a uh, it was like the Black Lives Matter riot or something like that. It was it no, it was like what? Uh, I want to say it was like yeah, I know you know that one. It was one of the Chloe Kardashians. Kardashian, I think, was like in the Middle East and like there's riots going on. And she's like, have a Pepsi. And they're like, oh, oh my gosh, I do remember that. I don't yeah, want to yeah, buy yeah. it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> That actually so, reminds me of the Family Guy when the, like democracy hits Iraq yeah. or something, and it's just like strip clubs and shit. <laughs> yeah. pop up. And so what ended up happening with that one was the same deal. While they got a huge outrage, everyone was suddenly talking about Pepsi. Right. Mm -hmm. So they brought in a bunch of people who converted over from Coke, and then three months later, the boycotters, majority of them ended up coming back, and sales for Pepsi went up. The same thing happened with Nike. I wasn't even aware of this Nike one. I saw a video on it. They explained it. People, when Nike did their stance, uh, I believe it, it was on one of them, but Nike did a stance on, I, I think it was like the police riots or something. People then bought, bought more Nike shoes. Nike shoes aren't cheap. No, they're not. To burn them. Yeah. People were buying like five or six pairs of Nikes to prove that they were going to burn Nikes. Yeah. Nike's sales shot up so much. <laughs> you know, this actually does remind me of when the comic skate started as well and people were buying the comics to like burn them and yeah. stuff and like a couple of authors were like well thanks for buying it though like, I, don't I don't care, care what, what you do you with it after, after you buy yeah. it yeah, yeah, yeah. and one of the more recent ones that made a lot of headlines was the gillette men do better ad remember i do one? i do remember seeing mm -hmm. that yeah, and yeah, that yeah. was the exact same thing people a lot of people boycotted Gillette because they were having a woke stance on something. Mm -hmm. And then at the end of it all, all their sales went up, all their stocks went up, everything worked. And it's funny because I've always found it hilarious when companies decide to take a stance on anything 
because mm-hmm. these are the same companies that are using sweatshops and yeah, all yeah, kinds yeah, of other yeah. polluting waters. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like the- well, yeah, but if you take a stance, people don't pay attention to that. <laughs> Exactly. It's legitimately Which, that's what marketing is. You're like this is all terrible, but look at that burning fire. Over <laughs> yeah, there. yeah, I mean that's that's a hundred percent what marketing yeah. generally well, is. It's what a lot yeah. of it is. You're one hundred percent right yeah. because well, I was doing all this research and it led me to a video where this guy had done a lot of like statistical research. And that's what he said. Yeah. They also discovered that by doing this, everyone seems to ignore all the like human rights problems they yeah. have mm-hmm. on the side. Yeah. <laughs> that's all it is. So that then goes down to where we're at. Wake up sheeple. <laughs> So that now brings. I said that seemed like a really good place to yeah. put a wake up no, sheeple. Like yeah, I yeah. like it. So that brings us to where we are now with comic books, where basically Batman, Batman just had one of his best stories in quite a while, in my opinion, failsafe, mm-hmm. and that made that no headlines. One. Right. But they changed the name of Superboy to Superman and have him come out as bi. Headlines everywhere. Right. People are buying it. Sales on the book ended up going up. I the, I can't find concrete sales at this point, but when they're promoting that that run of Superman's on, it's like fifth printing. I'm assuming it's doing well. <laughs> ah, so yeah. you also are falling for the advertising. <laughs> <laughs> but it brings us... It's all conspiracies, but baby. But basically, these arguments get made so that people can then... They, then they argue about it. And it's what I've said for like 10 years now. And people are like, how do we get them to stop making bad books? Don't buy it. Don't talk about it. But I have to talk about how much I hate it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Which brings us to the Joker, because as I put the video up, you know, and I talked about it, and someone responded to my explaining woke marketing, they're like, well, I don't like that. It feels like I'm being manipulated. 100%. Yes, that's what marketing is. <laughs> it's literally manipulating the market. <laughs> and I personally feel that all four of those crazy Joker that. stories were all intended to hit headlines with how bad DC is. Mm-hmm. It just the one where Joker got pregnant is the one that hit the headlines. Because I mean, the other ones are like Joker got gorilla legs or Joker's trying to. Which, if you think about it, is that. racist somehow. <laughs> I don't know how, but it's somewhere. Somebody, somebody uh, somewhere, somewhere is like, that's racist. Well, I found it funny because I put up the Joker thing and I just found it to be a stupid story. And every the biggest counterpoint I see it is that it's normalizing pregnant men. Right. And, I'm, and I didn't read it like that. When I read it, I'm like, actually, if we're going to take a political stance on this one, Joker's a man who's having a mud child. Like, if anything, that's like, men create mud. <laughs> like, <laughs> Or he just went to Taco Bell. <laughs> and that's my stance on Taco Bell. This is actually how uh, Wonder Woman was birthed. It wasn't clay in the beach. <laughs> it was it mud. Was just, she, her mother vomited <laughs> up mud. No, yeah. her mother vomited up Taco Bell. Ah. <laughs> the new narrative we're putting out there. Interesting. <laughs> Anyway, that's where it brings us here. And I don't find this story to be good. I don't find it to be bad. I just find it to be another Silver Age. We're going to cram it in there. Which brought up the idea of, well, if this is Silver Age, what other crazy sh** happened in the Silver Age? All of it. I'm pretty sure. (laughs) There was a lot of drugs in the Silver Age. So first off, before we get into that, um, I've gone ahead and pulled the... I found an article from CBR. Andy? Uh, I don't know who wrote this article, but they're an idiot. Uh, it's not this one didn't even sell. This <laughs> one didn't even give credit to a person. I maintain my stance. <laughs> this one is written by CBR staff. <laughs> oh, it was a, like a group effort. It was a group project, was, and uh, you know somebody didn't do any work. <laughs> it was a group email that went out. Yeah, yeah, Just yeah. give me one of the things Something, you think weird. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> everybody has that weird pregnancy in comics just off the top of their head. Obviously. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody's All got right. one. So some of these I know, some of these I don't know. And okay. matter of fact, the number one, I don't even know. Maybe you guys will. Okay. okay. But the first couple Aren't are kind of lame. Are you the comic storian? Yeah, I, I, yes. Um, no, you're the comic storian. Remember, you're my replacement. I'm the heir apparent. <laughs> I'm the comic historian. Uh, number 15 on this list, and they put this as the unexpected pregnancies, Iris West and the Flash. I vaguely know this one. You're a Flash fan. How do you not know this no, one? No, no, I know that I know that they had kids. How is that unexpected, though? It's just they had kids. Probably because they were like, wait, those are my kids from the future, but she's not preggers yet. What? We haven't even what? banged. <laughs> <laughs> but that means we're gonna. <laughs> <He's> like, yeah. <laughs> I feel like that'd I'm be like a lucky. Rick and Morty. Movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, I'm totally getting laid. He's like, okay, how old are you? All right, and the year is. The... <laughs> oh, that's next month. It's coming up. 
Uh, the next one on the list is Jessica Jones and Luke Cage. I also don't find it's unexpected. I was going to say, it's not really like, unexpected. They had a relationship and she yeah. got pregnant because they like banged. It, yeah, I feel like this is more of a list of like someone who does People it. weren't expecting it when they were reading the comics as uh, opposed to. As like a the weird. Oh, they yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry. Oh, they do? I, I did go down. Because oh, okay. I feel like that's like, I don't even know how they got pregnant. <laughs> well, you see, when a woman or anyone falls in love with anyone else, <laughs> sometimes one of those people. Or possibly both can get pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best phrased way to say yeah. that. Uh, the next up, and this one was kind of cool. Injustice had Harley Quinn and Joker's daughter. Oh, yeah. yeah I do remember oh, that. Yeah. 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 But Wait, was they, it Harley Quinn and Joker? I thought it was just Harley's daughter. No, no, it was Harley. It was, it was she, Harley Quinn and Joker. Joker wasn't her. aware of it, and Harley gave it to her sister. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I am going to be moving through these relatively quickly because we have so many things to hit up. I didn't notice when we were on our fourth one already. Oh, yeah. Uh, I don't know this these person's characters, pregnant. but Andy, since you're the heir apparent, maybe you know Angel and Beak. Well, they're X-Men. Or they're mutants. Yeah. Well, now all the mutants are pregnant. That is true. They're <laughs> always banging. banging it's like Bang time. Island. The, the only island thing I find weird about this, and I'll make Dan pull this image up. Um, they're show Beak, apparently, his power is that he has a bird beak. Yes. And he's yes. He, he's they, one of the worst oh, mutants. Actually, I know I know the couple because there is in the early Hickman run, they were like on a farm and it was part of the everyone was swarming mm. and like killing them all and they were in there with their kids and stuff. I actually remember that one. Well, they, they drew her kissing on yeah. the beat. It's just yeah. kind of weird. Listen, thing. you never saw that the original Howard the Duck movie? <laughs> no, I When Leah actually. Thompson makes out with Howard the Duck? Uh, this that one I didn't know thing. was a thing, but I know these superheroes. Mystique and Sabretooth. I did not know. I did not know those yeah. two. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently, uh, she was around. carrying an unexpected child after a fling. Um, and when the child was born, they were both disappointed to discover that the child was fully human. So she so they, put it up for adoption. Oh, I was going to say, oh. so they killed it. <laughs> the child was then named Graydon Creed. Oh, God. <laughs> Who comes up with this? And then became, um, he basically joined up with an anti-mutant organization. Well, yeah, his two <laughs> evil mutant parents gave him up for adoption. And named be- him Graydon Creed. Because he was, you can legally change that. Because he was human. Like, that's like... It's just as bad, honestly, if two normal human parents gave up a mutant baby for adoption. It's the same thing. The best part is like 16 years later, they heard that he went through puberty and got powers. They're like, ah, "Ah, come on back. I would be mad at my mom and dad. (laughs) Um, Number 10 is spoiler and Dean. (laughs) Who's Dean? Who's Dean? Apparently it was a boyfriend she had before No Man's Land. Oh, okay. And then she got pregnant before No Man's Land and had the child afterwards. You sound really that weird. And then gave the child up for adoption. It's like, oh no, a teenager made some bad decisions. (laughs) Okay, literally happens all the time. <laughs> yeah, it just sounds more like we're surprised that it was those two parents. Maybe, I guess. Yeah, like, yeah. Well, it's a spoiler. I, when I first read this, the image shows her and Tim. See, okay, so I, let's say that would be that, like, yeah. yeah. I was like, oh my God. Even that's not that weird. It's two yeah. teenagers made a bad decision. Yeah. I was more surprised. Like, I never heard about Tim and Spoiler's child. Right. Yeah, yeah. No, well, it turns out he didn't, have any, he didn't have any mutant powers, so they gave him up. <laughs> they were like, we can't keep this kid. Batman's going to make him a Robin. We got to get him out of here. <laughs> Put him it was, up for it was apparently her random ex-boyfriend who ran away when no man's Sure. Started. Even that, not all that weird. If they weren't like together and like right. the whole city has been caught, walled no. off. Yeah. I mean. Cheshire and Arsenal. Not weird. No. I, Other than the fact yeah. that I get a sidekick and a villain. Yeah. You, now I can see can why no one wanted to take credit for this list. Yeah, serious. This is a really <laughs> boring list. <laughs> We're going to get to the interesting stuff in a minute. Don't worry. Uh, oh, yeah. Power Girl with Aaron? Aaron? A- Aaron? I guess she got pregnant during Crisis on Infinite Earth. Sure. Okay. And I love the panel I mean, she's to have the boot. Dan, Dan, Dan oh, can grab this image language. too. I really find this one funny because she's just like, I, I think, think I'm pregnant. He'll <laughs> <laughs> put it on the screen. Don't it's worry. the 80s. Everything was more dramatic back then. <laughs> you um, knew it was dramatic when the speech bubble went all pointy. And Superman was like, why are you shouting right now? <laughs> I'm <laughs> right here. I'm literally right next to you. I have super humor. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of hurt. Yeah. Like, what the hell? Uh, this one I find funny. Tigra and a scroll. Just a scroll. <laughs> That's not a... his name. It's not a scroll. <laughs> it's just a or a scroll. It's just a scroll. Two separate words. This one is the one I was reading before this because I was trying to figure it out. Rocket and Noble. And my first idea was I thought Rocket that was, Raccoon. I thought it was Raccoon. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Comics are weird sometimes where it's like, you know who's really hot? 
that mutated <laughs> raccoon over there. I thought it was like, you finally got me with it. I wasn't expecting yeah, that yeah. one. It would have been better if it was Rocket and, and Groot. Groot. Yeah. But no, it's Rocket. And you have I think a tree the child raccoon. or the antagonist or pro- the somebody from the Icon series, which I didn't read too much of. Yeah, yeah. I know, I know I, they pop up randomly in DC Comics. I know but. Rocket from uh, Young Justice. Mm. That's yeah. Exactly, yeah. They do randomly pop up. Uh, this one was created by uh, Bruce Tim. Yeah, that dude loved obsession. loved having Barbara and Bruce get together. Yeah, Barbara and Bruce had a child, and that's what caused Dick to like. I don't want nothing to do with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. my the girl that I love, and who's also underage, Bruce. Yeah. <laughs> Although it's obviously and you're she kind was. of a father figure. Yeah, yeah kind of weird. <laughs> there's a lot of reasons you shouldn't be doing this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like there's a whole mess. In all honesty, well, we should send Bruce Tim to go see somebody about this. Cause <laughs> Probably. He, it up. he does add it to a lot of stuff. Yeah. Are we going to get his weird one with the green lantern and the underage girl that like pretended to be older? She didn't get pregnant. Oh, that's so. true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. This one, I, I know who Quasar is. I don't know who Aya, 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 Aishi, Ayasha Aisha is. <laughs> Cosmic being. She, they, <laughs> she gets pregnant. But apparently, because she's so powerful, refuses to carry the child, so Quasar has to carry the child. Yeah. What's Quasar's problem? a man, by the way, and this is an incontinuity story. Yeah. What's the problem? What happens to the baby when they swap places? <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> Granted, there's nowhere for it to be, but... Because that is Quasar, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 The baby goes with Quasar. Uh, What's his face? I don't remember Quasar's like, human personality. Is like, I'm good. <laughs> She implanted numerous humans with reproductive pods to see if they could carry her child to term. <laughs> There's a problem. <laughs> Listen, you give it another 10 years, we're going to do that anyway. Yeah. Uh, Hippolyta and Zeus, I didn't find that one to be. Well, no, yeah, that's how Wonder that's, Woman came about. Yeah. No, turns she's out she's a not, mud baby. <laughs> no, it turns out she wasn't a mud baby. Turns out she was a baby baby. And then, Andy, this is the one you were like, that better be on there, Miss Marvel. Yeah, yeah. yeah. She gets... <laughs> She's pregnant with her own rapist <laughs> from an alternate dimension, so that dimension. he can get birthed into the main. Who then dimension. shows up again in Kang Dynasty, but it's a different one. <laughs> that was so weird. I think, and she obviously is not cool with it, and but he's he like, know why. but he doesn't know why, and is totally infatuated with her. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody had when some it, deep problems <laughs> when they wrote these stories. To make this one worse, it is technically still in continuity because yes. I remember in the Kelly Thompson run, she's trying to like calm someone down and she's like, yeah, don't worry. I went, this I was totally pregnant happened. once with my own rapist. <laughs> don't worry. We figured it out. <laughs> no, figured it don't out. question it. We're moving It's one of those things it. where you go back and you're like, who approved this? Who yeah. thought this was a solid idea? So, and then the last one, I know of the characters, I didn't know this happened, but Siren and Multiple Man. Yeah, but which multiple man that's was the it? Problem. That's, yeah. that's the problem. Yeah. The alimony checks, you get a lot. <laughs> and every time he makes a new one, you get a new alimony multiple check. Multiple man every knocked time up he's... his girlfriend oh. on the same night he cheated on her with their teammate M. So he was... <laughs> he was... So if he then Ten, splits it, again later, does the embryo split again? <laughs> to sleep with both women at once, he created a duplicate of himself while blackout drunk, leaving him incapable okay. of remembering who he'd been with and who got the clone. There you go. <laughs> I wonder if that would work as an argument, like in court. When she found out she was pregnant, Siren decided to keep the baby despite her boyfriend's infidelity. After nine hard months of fearful, delicate, body-changing pregnancy, Siren finally gave birth to a baby boy. Boy, Unfortunately, when Multiple Man tried to hold his son, it absorbed back into his body, <laughs> revealing that it was the duplicate that impregnated her. Jesus! <laughs> Who comes up with this shit? <laughs> See, these are the kind of things that should be coming out today with the outrageous marketing. It's true, yeah. Because yeah, these yeah. would be getting talked about. However, oh, she, don't take that as a hint and have this. We don't need to have again. this happen again. I don't want it. Multiple man's like, listen, I got a 50-50 shot. I'm going to have to deal with that kid. So. They go on Krakoa and they're like, wait, half these babies are multiple men. <laughs> Damn it, Maddox. What are you doing? <laughs> banging. He's like, Lots of banging. <laughs> it's your fault for putting a bar on the <laughs> island, guys. <laughs> you know I like to drink. All right, before we get to the 30 craziest Silver Age moments that, we'll, that we're going to decide if they are worse or or on par or better than the Joker moment. Okay. We should uh, open this portal. I thought about it for once. You did. Good <laughs> job. Today's episode is sponsored by PayPal Honey, the easiest way to save when shopping on your iPhone or computer. Are you stressing when you shop online and are you worrying that you're paying too much? Do you not have time to search for coupons? Well, thanks to Honey, you don't have to. 
Honey is a free shopping tool that scours the internet for promo codes and applies the best ones it finds to your cart. It's super simple too. You just click apply coupons when checking out and Honey will search for coupons and instantly apply the best working coupons that they find to your cart. I shop online a lot and Honey has saved me easily hundreds of dollars at this point and even just saved me another $15 on supplies for our D&D campaign. Honey doesn't just work on desktops, it works in your iPhone too. Just activate it on Safari on your phone and save on the go. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight missing out and by getting it, you're doing yourself a solid in supporting the show, which we also appreciate. I never recommend something that I don't use. So get PayPal Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash experiment. That's joinhoney.com slash experiment. All right, guys, welcome back. Here we go. He didn't close the portal. Oh. It's still open. Oh, God. And then we closed. I just got uh, hit with, <laughs> with, with uh, pop-ups. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I got to start at the 10 most ridiculous Superman moments. Ridiculous. Uh, written by Dan's mom. George. I don't know. They don't. They didn't, they didn't want credit for this, Andy. What? So. I said George Clooney. I don't know why, but <laughs> it wasn't George Clooney. It was George Takei. <sighs> um. I would, so I would trust him. They've got number ten is the Bizarro World, and every time that his world would show up with Bizarro, Bizarro Lois Lane. Basically, the first couple of attempts they made Bizarro, where it was instead of being like a true villain, it was just just right. a really weird backward <laughs> Superman. <laughs> yeah. Less weird. That's just a I would say less story. weird. Yeah, yeah. Um, less weird than Joker? Oh, yeah. Okay, next up we've got Ant-Man, Superman. Red I would watch Kryptonite. that movie. <laughs> Red Kryptonite. You can grab this image, Dan. Uh, turned him into an ant. An just, actual- his head. <laughs> just his head. Just his head. Send part. me this list. I'll just make the five shorts this week based off of this. Oh, that's yeah, a good I like idea. it. Yeah, I like yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> So Superman turns into a the head of an ant, um, right? And he, but he's literally no, an <laughs> ant man. It's not he's only man. got the head of an ant. That he doesn't true. turn into a sentient yeah. so, ant. Yeah. It's weirder Henry Cavill or on par with an with ant Joker's head. pregnancy. I would say that's probably weirder. <laughs> I, just because it's just the head. The fact that it's just the head and literally nothing else changes, like same arms yep, and everything. Yep. Uh, Henry yeah, Cavill weirder. with an ant head. Yeah, I like it. Oh, I guess this story, it gets weirder. The story is because the ants showed up to give us a PS, PSA about nuclear destruction. And Superman obviously, with his giant ant head listens to it a bunch and then uses it to talk to the UN as a giant ant. He then repairs their spaceship and sends them home. Wait, so they're alien ants? <laughs> yeah. Who apparently are against nuclear warfare. <laughs> yes. Which is a strong stance to take. <laughs> Did you know nuclear warfare was bad? <laughs> the more you know. I don't know. Um, Superman went underwater where he made himself a, th- a crown and a throne to sit upon. Sure. But that was just so in Frank Miller's year one. <laughs> yeah. Well, he goes and lives underwater for a while. Oh, yeah. It was weird. Uh, technically the throne and the crown only happened on the cover, but I still love how completely and utterly bored he looks trying to save people. Well, yeah, it's underwater. It's- he poisons the sea by oversalting it to trick some aliens into leaving. Oh, okay. Because it was the Not one thing I thought we were super- going with this. Yeah. The- yeah. <laughs> Because it's the one thing that Silver Age Superman was just all about, tricking people in all the gosh darn time. Uh, Silver Age Superman knew two ways to solve problems, either trust-shattering levels of lying and deceit or punching people in it. it. <laughs> so weirder or not as weird as Joker? Uh, I would weird. say more boring. Yeah, 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 yeah boring? not really. Okay. Yeah, not really weird. Especially time, if it was mostly like just weird. a cover. Yeah. Because especially because there's a lot of covers where it's like, that has nothing to do with the story. Well, they still do that now. Where it's exactly. like a cover comes out and it's like, this doesn't happen in the story yeah. at all. Uh, Superboy got fat. Yep. <laughs> that, John Super was just Boy, eating a lot of eclairs. Now, Superboy had been away for two weeks and returns to Smallville, only to discover something shocking. All of the students had become super fat for no reason, including Lana Lang. So he, so next, he dumped her. <laughs> the next day, he swells up like a balloon, causing Lana to get suspicious because if Clark is fat and Superboy is fat, then Clark must be Superboy. That all tracks. <laughs> Never mind the fact that apparently everybody else in the school got fat, including Lana. Superboy eventually discovers that the entire town has been Ooh. drinking milk tainted by a growth formula thanks to stupid cows who ate tainted crops. Stupid cows. As, opposed to, the, stupid cows? as opposed to the super intelligent cows that live in Smallville. Superboy fixes the problem and tricks Lana into doubting that he and Clark he are the diet same pills. He gaslights Lana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no one was fat, Lana. What are you talking about? <laughs> I think you except should go see you, someone. Except you maybe hit the treadmill, Lana. I think we're going to stay with you forever. 
I mean, uh, that happens in like small towns. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, yeah, they just end up together, and then she gets all fat, or he gets all fat, and somebody gets fat. Right. Yeah. It happens. Superman punches an ape in the face. That uh, tracks. <laughs> Sounds like him versus he, Gorilla Grodd. It doesn't. It wasn't even that. It was just he went to the zoo, was drunk, and just started slapping around one of the other gorillas. <laughs> that would be fantastic. Basically, it was an ape that had been driven mad by space radiation. So of Superman course. decides to just start punching it. <laughs> You know, now I just want like a bunch of short stories of Superman being drunk and <laughs> just drunkenly do. doing stuff. Um, stop so I get a stab gorilla grind. <laughs> there's the time that Superman got the head of a lion and the paws of a lion. Okay. And the cover was building it as the lady and the lion. So he's going to continue to date Lois with yeah. this whole Beauty and the Beast thing going <laughs> yeah, on. Yeah, exactly. They're like. Bestiality is pretty hot right now. <laughs> it's Honestly, <laughs> it's the seventies. <70s. laughs> Honestly, everyone's freaking out about the Joker pregnancy when he got the ape legs. I was like, th- and they didn't freak <laughs> out about the the, the the fact that they made Joker into a, an ape. Like, there's so many things wrong with this. <laughs> well, yeah, I have they- some jokes that I'm not going to say on this podcast, but yeah, I could totally see this going in a different direction. Um, there, yeah. So he, for the record, in the comic, he has a sidekick that's a talking ape. Well, yeah. Uh, what's gorilla. his name? Uh, yeah, yeah. That's, Is that like an actual? That's been thing around for a while. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was in um, Silver Age. <laughs> no, that was Grant Morrison's run. Oh, yeah. Why Although did I Tom think Taylor I think, bring him into the. I think the metal. ape is from the Silver Age because Grant Morrison brought in a lot of like Silver Age stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's like Jack and Apes or something yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I want him in Dark Knights of Steel now. That'd be um, hilarious. Apparently, the plot with the the lion head is that he. Uh, apparently, just has a he has a library where there was an antidote for the lion head. <laughs> Obviously, <laughs> he went up to Lois and was like, "Lois, it's like, no, I'm fine. <laughs> it's fair. It's fair. Hold on, let me get my lion's head antidote <laughs> that I happen to make. Nam Nam Reparus, whatever. It, uh, it's Superman backwards. Okay. Okay. There's a storyline uh. where Superman decides to get back at Mister Mixelpitalik by flying to the fifth dimension, discovers that Mixelpitalik is running for mayor, and then systematically ruins his campaign. <laughs> Dirty politics. That's what yeah, I think about yeah. when I think of Superman. I, you know what? That's that one tracks. Yeah. That one I could see just a lot being of like, a normal story. Honestly, there's a lot of like coke and acid being done. In, like, I know we forgot rage. to do it for the last couple, but is this one weirder or on par with pregnancy? Oh yeah, uh, uh, yeah this is pretty weird. Yeah. I put it on I, par. I would say yeah, probably on par. I don't know yeah. if I'd go weirder. The lion's head, I would probably say a little weirder, <laughs> just because it's odd. like what? Yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, there was a period in which Superman had a new power. Okay. And that was to shoot rainbows out of his fingertips. <laughs> Happy Pride Month, by the way. Uh, <laughs> I was going to say, to be honest, that kind of seems like something they would do now for yeah. Pride Month. <laughs> yeah. Um, like just randomly, like, yeah, you do it. And then at the end of the, the issue, he just, it goes away. Yeah. I can't even Until see what they were supposed year. to do. It just, he shoots rainbows out of his hand. That's what all more does he need to do? I mean, you know what? The question that is, what does, what do the rainbows do? That's what I mean. I can't Are they like it. hard light constructs, like a green lantern kind of thing? Or does it literally just like a light show and it does nothing? Like he's like I ah, wanted to go to a rave. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, like what he could use it to like distract people. Like you know what I'm saying. Uh, this one we've mentioned a few times in these kinds of lists, but when he could shoot tiny Supermen out of yes, yep. yes, that one I'll put as weirder. Which because you never know could what he's doing also with those. be a euphemism for masturbation. <laughs> if you think about it. No, Andy, explain that to me. Okay, so <laughs> when you say your fist, you know what? Let's <laughs> let's let's not. You you guys know where I'm going with this. Um, apparently, I didn't know the story behind this though. Okay, he's using that to save people, and then they start praising tiny Superman for their heroism, which makes big Superman jealous. So he stops using the power. <laughs> so he still technically yeah. has the power, because that's what needs to come out in the new Superman issues. He just starts shooting tiny Superman again. <laughs> this just for some reason reminds me of that time in Futurama when Bender starts making mini Bender. Yeah, 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 yeah. Apparently, he plots the death of the tiny duplicates. Wow. He's yes. dark. He starts squishing him. But he doesn't get a chance to do it because the all the little supermen sacrifice themselves to save Metropolis. I'm going to just say, the fact that you said he stops using it really makes me want him to just randomly use That's it. That's what I'm saying. They, he, yeah. they should bring that back where he's like, remember this? <laughs> just little tiny supermen shoot out. Okay. And uh, then this hand is rainbows. And he goes, I'm going to name this one John. I'm going to name this one God. So this is another image Dan can put up here. But uh, Superboy getting a spanking. It's... You remember during that whole thing where they were like panicked that comic books were turning people gay? <laughs> so they, 
Apparently, <laughs> like, uh, there, he was arguing with his parents. Hold on, just real clear. I'm not saying that it was true or anything like that. I'm just saying like it's a, it's a weird image yeah. is all I'm it saying. Is. It is. It's on the screen. You guys should have seen it by now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that Clark refuses the punishment from Jonathan. So Jonathan bends Clark over his knee and smacks him on the butt with a hairbrush and realizes it doesn't and work. That's the comic. That was the whole issue. <laughs> All 21 pages. <laughs> all, all 21 pages. This is, this is a silver age. So it was probably like 30 something pages. Honestly. So, in order to pe- to punish him, they abandon him as an abandoned <laughs> child. There you go. They can't spank him. He's super Which, depressed until That makes home. sense if you think about it. If your kid was too strong for you at that age, obviously you got to abandon him. <laughs> and just really hope they don't find you. Later. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, now we're going to run through a couple Batman ones. Uh, Batman's more Batman just individual spanks panels. Robin. <laughs> And then Robin spanks Batman. And people wonder. And then Alfred why walks in on him. And spanks them both. <laughs> what are we reading? I don't even know. The Silver uh, Age actually, is Actually, this weird. was just individual panels, so we're not going to hit that one up. Uh, so to end this video, we're going to do this one. Since since Joker turned into half ape and, and he also turned into pregnant, mm-hmm. um, we're gonna go into with, pregnant. He turned into it. He didn't get pregnant. He, he turned, turned into, into pregnant. pregnant. The he You're turned right. into the physical embodiment of the idea of pregnancy. <laughs> <laughs> what? And it was written by Grant Morrison. He turned into a giant <laughs> uterus. <laughs> you know, I do want to say, just for the people watching, my favorite part of that that comic is he goes to the like radioactive doctor. I can't remember his name. But he's like, doctor, is this going to hurt? And he's like, I don't know where it's going to come out. So, yeah, it's probably going to hurt. <laughs> and turns out he vomited it out. Yeah. Just uh, like okay. real pregnant. <laughs> so as a quick one, I thought it'd be funny to look at the different transformations that Jimmy Olsen went through in the Silver Age. Okay. All right. He became that froggy Superman. Right. So we're going to do superhero. these quick though. So I'm going to say him and you say weird or not. Okay. okay. Bizarro Jimmy. Not, not weird. Yeah, not really. Okay. He just sounds like drunk Jimmy. <laughs> Me, I'm sparking backwards. <laughs> um, Jimmy, Jimmy. A mind reading version of Jimmy. Not weird. Not weird. No, that's not weird. Uh, what appears to be a mummy. He turns into a mummy. <laughs> now, what do you mean? Like, is it Halloween? I don't know. <laughs> let me see. Let me see. Oh, look. According to my next vision, Jimmy has turned into a typical inhabitant of the planet or Jupiter. Okay, yeah, we'll go weird. <laughs> Apparently, Jupiter oh, I th- I is overrun just, by mummies. <laughs> that he was just doing his hush cosplay. Um, he turns into a porcupine that breaks hearts and grows spikes. Weird. Uh, yeah, that's weird. I'll give it that one. Yeah, yeah, that's odd. However, I want to read. Also, I just don't understand the. Uh, I don't. He doesn't turn into a porcupine. He just grows spikes. I like the idea of he breaks hearts and grows spikes. Like that's that's like on his profile on Tinder or something. Jimmy recreated Beauty and the Beast as the Wolfman of Metropolis. What does that mean? <laughs> I think he was a wolf man. <laughs> wolf. But when, when I say like it re- recreates Beauty and the Beast, what does that mean? He's kidnapped a young girl I, after I'm her gonna, father plucked a rose. At the top, I'm going to say that he kidnapped Lois. <laughs> oh no, not Lois. It's somebody else. <laughs> yeah, it's, I'm saying Lois isn't blonde. Next up, we have Jimmy Olsen makes being fat a superpower. So America today. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Um, not really the evil super professor pad. Potter, uh, not, the evil professor Potter, which would be Andy, uh, tricks him into drinking a, a weight gaining elixir. <laughs> the weight gain. How is did a he weird trick twist. him though? You want to drink? It gives him weight in precious gems. Oh, a, a Marahar, a Maraharja. Mar, 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 basically, Mar-a-ya? he gets given a ton of money in his weight, and he ends up dressing like Santa Claus. <laughs> what the hell? I'm gonna say not weird because that's literally just. The Blob's superpower. It's true. Uh, he also turned into a genie, Genie Olsen. <laughs> okay, I like that one. It's, I like. It's clever. I like the name change. Yeah, I'm, I'm a good fan not, of puns. I mean, it's pretty weird, yeah. Okay. But good weird. Jimmy and Mixel Pitalik team up to give everyone a chance to transform. Not, not weird. weird. Not weird. It's, it seems like a Mr. Mixel Pitalik thing. Uh, he becomes super big brained. <laughs> I like that one. That's just funny. Yeah, that's not weird. That's Earth 2, Jimmy. That's true. <laughs> um, he becomes a redheaded beetle in 1000 BC. <laughs> that's a little weird. <laughs> when you said a redheaded beetle, I was like, wait, he joined the Beatles? That's, <laughs> I think the that's what they're going member. for here. It does kind of look like it. But in a toga. <laughs> well, he's in 1000 BC, so. 
you know, when the Beatles are Andy written. turns into a giant turtle man kaiju. I love it. <laughs> weird, weird, and I want it. Weird in a good way. In a good way. Good weird. <laughs> Great Scott, why is Jimmy suffering? Why is Jimmy stuffing that volcano crater with a battleship? <laughs> what on earth is his huge twisted mi- turtle mind up to? I li- so that's the funny thing about like Golden and Silver Age comics where you literally like everyone thought everything so it was like if Batman had to hit somebody with a batarang, he'd be like, you know what I need to do right now is hit this person with a batarang. <laughs> yep. Just in case you couldn't get that from the images. So anyway, uh, yeah, Silver Age is weird. Uh, yes. Don't forget yeah. to check out our sponsor, Honey. Go check out our cha- other channels. Primarily, we're promoting Manga Story in this week, but you can also check out Absolutely Marvel in DC, Dungeons and Ale, Tales from the Mind. Andy's doing some weird stuff with people eating stuff. I made it as vague as possible. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, don't, I honestly don't even know what he's talking about, to be honest. Does anybody ever? I'm Silver Rage Betty. <laughs> okay, now it tracks. Now it makes sense. <laughs> Time traveling Silver Rage Benny strikes again. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time right here at Comics Experiment. Bye.